Hey, this is Vaughn Vernon. Welcome to my Design Accelerator tutorial. This week I'm talking about Kafka is not an event store. This is not a new topic for me. It may be the first time that you've heard me discuss it, but I'm going to dive into a topic that came up actually about nine years ago or so, even more uh, longer than that, uh, closer to 10 years. And a team that I was working with thought that they could use Kafka as an event store. I'll explain why that's not a good idea or even a fairly good idea. So let's dive into this topic. My design accelerator tutorials are brought to you by my company Kalele. You can learn about my most popular workshop the IDD workshop teaching domain-driven design from strategic through tactical modeling. You'll find us on the web at kalele.io and my workshop at kalele.io slash IDD workshop. I think what confuses people about Kafka and the possibility of it serving as an event store is that it does have some characteristics that are similar to what you would think of as an event store for event sourcing. So just to set the context here, I am talking about an event store to be used for event sourcing. An event store to be used for event sourcing is one that is much more a database than it is a message log. Kafka is a message log. Let me step you through this a bit further. All right, let's just say that we're working in a domain-driven design environment. We have a sales bounded context or the sales context, and thus we have a Kafka topic of sales events. Each of the events is entered into a Kafka topic. This is a single partition. The partition begins at index zero and the message is some kind of event payload. It continues with message one, message two, message three, message four, each of these is an event. Monotonically increasing index continues in a sequence. We're not showing a bunch of uh, existing events here, but then we reach, what is it, 100,001, 100,000 and first, which would actually be 100,000 and second event. And then we have yet another non-gap, number of events that exist throughout this topic partition and we finally reach nearly 1 billion events in this topic partition. All right, just to give you an idea of the sheer number of events that could occur and actually probably far, far more than 1 billion events. Next, I introduce a concept in the sales context. It is called purchase and a purchase has a state we're representing the state as a single instance variable of type purchase state. This would be an immutable type. So the only thing that's mutable in the entire purchase is the state instance variable itself. And it is fully replaced by a new state when the state transitions. All right, given that we are using event sourcing, we have this purchase object, and this is one instance of the purchase object. It has a unique identity, which is stored in the purchase state as part of the purchase aggregate itself. So let's just refer to this as a purchase aggregate to keep things simple. It is an event sourced aggregate. The events that represent the state of this purchase aggregate are found at index two, index 100,003, and index 998, million, 40,021. It's almost 1 billion. Just think of it like that. So the very first event for this purchase happens rather early in this particular partition of sales events. But then its next event doesn't happen until 100,003 other events are written, right? Don't forget that zero is the first event. So index number two, the third event in this partition, and then the 104,000th event, and then nearly the billionth event are the three events that are used to represent the state of this purchase. We're going to fold left on each of these 
events that are in the stream and we're going to fold them into the purchase state to represent its state. You getting the picture here? Yeah. You're going to have to scan the entire topic to get all three events that belong to this purchase. Why? Because it's a message log. It has a single index that represents each of the messages. And by the way, it is a message log, right? So it's for messages. And you can think of an event as a message, but this is not a good general purpose event store for this, the purpose of using event sourcing. It is good for a message log. What's more, it becomes very expensive in the cloud the more events that you add to this sales events topic. Every one of the partitions will have any grand number of events stored in them and it can become very, very expensive to store those over the long term. When you're using event sourcing, you are going to have to save those events for years, likely for at least years. Think of it like a tax return. In the United States, we have to save our tax returns for about seven years, I think. Let's just say it's seven years because that's what I can remember. So you don't want to get rid of any of the tax records that you have for second seven years because you could be audited. And for the same reason, you could be audited for your sales, or you simply want to have a record of all the sales that have occurred for a number of years. So you are going to keep these events for a long, long time. And the more events that you have, if you are making a lot of e-commerce sales, for example, there are going to be many, many events. There could be a billion events per day could be even more than that, depending on the success of the e-commerce system that you're working in. Just for example, that we're using here for sales. So we're talking about a lot of events and every single time that you add another event, we don't know that the events for purchase end here. Let's say that there are now 2 billion events or 3 billion events in this topic partition. You're going to have to scan all 3 billion events to find out that you still only have three events in this events in this sales events topic partition. That's very slow. That is not optimal at all. Next, for those who really, really want to use Kafka as an event sourcing event store, you start to hear the wheels turning in their head, the mental gymnastics start to engage and they're saying, hmm, let me think here. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just create a separate partition for every single aggregate instance. Hmm, think about that for a moment. You're going to have a billion Kafka partitions, 100,000 Kafka partitions. I mean, how many different aggregate instances might you have in a given bounded context? Think of how many sales you could make in an e-commerce system. I mean, I'm not saying that this couldn't work in some cases, but would you even want to have 100 partitions in a Kafka topic? I just can't imagine trying to maintain those. And, and then think about the long-term storage, the cost of the long-term storage for even 100 partitions. It's going to get very, very expensive. So please don't do that. That specific mental gymnastic, that, what is that, parallel bars or something like that? Just don't try that it's gonna hurt. A really sad part of this is quite likely someone is going to stop listening before I even get to this point and they're going to comment and they're going to say, yeah, but all you have to do is create a separate partition per aggregate instance. I, I can almost guarantee, okay, I hope not. I really hope that doesn't happen, but we'll have to see. Okay, bad idea. What do we do now? Well, we could do this. We could take the purchase instance, the instance of the aggregate with a unique identity. As you can see here, I'm representing the unique identity as p-uuid-4. This would be an actual uuid or GUID value. I'm not showing it here because of the length. And I'm just using the dash 4. You'll see in a moment the reason for that, but I'm using it to show that it is actually unique 
beyond just the character's UUID that are representative of an actual value, all right? So what we can do is take as each event occurs and those events are written into the topic partition, we will, with each of those events, project them into a state. So the very first event that occurs is projected into a brand new state for that one event. When the next event occurs, event two, which is the sequence of events that have occurred for this specific purchase, we will project that event on top of the state that already exists from the first event. So we now have the combination of the first event and the second event projected into this state. And then what we do is we see the third event arrive and we are going to project this event, the third one, into the combination of what's already there, event one and event two, base state, and we apply this third one to the state and we now have a new state. Okay, so we're building this up over time, but what are we accomplishing by doing that? How do we, for example, persist it? So what we do is each time we generate a new state, we are going to persist that state as a key value pair p dash uuid dash four into a k table purchases. So if some Kafka is great, then more Kafka is going to be even better. It'll be fantastic, right? Not exactly. Although you can do this, what's the problem here? The problem is it's not atomic. That's right. So as we attempt to persist these together, this state will not be written atomically as each of these events is appended to the topic partition. That means that if someone reads from the K table a purchase state before the event that was just persisted here, they are going to read a stale state. There is actually no way to guarantee that the state that is written into the current key value pair will be the current state as represented by all events that have been written into the sales events topic partition. After a lot of mental gymnastics here, we haven't really accomplished anything with Kafka serving as an event store. It's just not going to work well. There are too many potential problems that can exist because of attempting this. So perhaps now you're ready to consider a real event store. How can a real event store overcome these problems? All right, let's take a look at a relational table example of a true event store. In fact, I'm not naming this event store. I'm naming it sales sources. What's in this name? Well, first of all, sales is the name of the bounded context. And sources refers to the source of the state that will be derived from the sources. So for example, a kind of source is an event because again, we're using event sourcing. Our aggregate, our purchase aggregate is an event sourced aggregate. So the sources are the events, for example. Now there could be other kinds of sources, but for right now, we're only discussing event sourcing. In this table, we have a unique index, a monotonically increasing value in one column. And you can see these are the same values that existed for the Kafka topic partition. In the next two columns, we have the name of the stream or the unique identity of the aggregate, one and the same. So the unique identity of the aggregate of this particular purchase aggregate, p-uuid-4, is both the unique identity and the name of the stream. In the next column, we have the index of the event that has occurred. So for example, the very first event that has occurred for p-uuid-4 is one, and the event that corresponds to that is here in this column. We have a total of three events. We have another entry for it. Again, down at the same position, the overall index, the global index of all the sources is 100,003. And p-uuid-4 has a second event 
or a second version. And at nearly 1 billion down here, we have P UUID 4 3. So the third event or the third version of this purchase aggregate with this unique identity exists right here. Now you can well imagine that we can select on this table the stream name where stream name is equal to p uid 4 and the stream version and the event and the metadata if we want metadata with it as well. So we can select all of these columns or we can just select the uh, these columns and we order by the index or the version of the aggregate p dash UUID dash 4 version 1, version 2, and version 3. And we order by this so that we get the events in the order in which they occurred, and then we can reapply them or basically project them into the state of this purchase aggregate. Th these two columns also serve as a total unique identity. So for example, for optimistic concurrency, a duplicate same version from being inserted by a different thread, for example. So there can only be one p-uuid-4 version 1. There can only be one version 2, and there can only be one version 3. If there were a race condition, one of the two races would win. One would be inserted, the other would be an error. We would have a concurrency violation or a conflicting uh, index. If we need to know the overall ordering, so for example, we want to select these out and put them onto a message bus, a message queue, message broker in a specific topic, then we can select in this order. We also have associated with the event, we must have the event type. I'm not showing a separate column for that here but we must know the event type and we must know also the type of aggregate that these events belong to. So I'm not showing that here, but you can assume that that's part of the event information. And we also can have metadata, metadata for each of the events, so data about the event in addition to the event data itself. So this is what is missing from Kafka, the additional double um, two indexes that we have, but the additional index that is a unique index across the stream name and the stream version, or the unique identity of the aggregate, which serves as the stream name, and the index of the event that has occurred in a given order. When we have these two together in the same table, or depending on how you design your relationships within the relational database, this is what gives you the ability to select as you need for a given aggregate instance by identity and to reapply those events to the state of the aggregate. This is a suitable event store. I'm not recommending that an event store be designed based on a relational database. It could be. It may not be the very best choice depending on the throughput that you need, the high performance nature of the application that you're working on. You may need a much faster storage engine, but this is an easy way to understand how an, a true event sourcing event store works by using a relational model. This is all the time that I have for today. Thanks for joining me. My IDD workshop is coming up at the end of March. I invite you to take a look at it and the upcoming agenda, which is very project-based. We'll go into dealing with a big ball of mud and how to break that up into multiple bounded contexts. And we do strategic design, of course, with context mapping. And we use various tools for understanding the domain, for experimentation, for discovery-based learning. And also we get into tactical modeling. I look forward to meeting you there if possible. And until next time, take care.